Welcome back to one of the darkest and most unsightly corners of YouTube. Uh, it's been a minute since my last video, but I'm only allowed to post a video once my uh, facial hair has reached this length, so I'll probably see you guys again in another six months. Anyway, uh, I'm whatever my name is, and here's a title screen. In my last video, I showed you guys how to take the ESP32 Marauder firmware and install it on your Flipper Zero Wi-Fi development board. That video left so many questions unanswered and so many toes unsucked. And since then, a lot has changed for the Flipper Zero and its Wi-Fi development board. There's a lot to cover here, but we're just going to stick to what's changed about the Marauder and how you can use it. I'm sure there's a third thing, but I don't plan ahead. Now you wait just a cotton picking minute here, because if you think I'm going to let another minute go by before I thank the beautiful people on Patreon, pa pa Papsmere, for supporting this channel, you're wrong. I owe it to these great people for making it so I can afford at least one extra carton of eggs every month. Without them, I don't know where I would be. But seriously, all jokes aside, you guys are amazing, and I really can't thank you enough for the support. All right. Well, I'm gonna get to painting this drywall. Remember when I told you you needed a PC or a mobile phone in order to interface with the Marauder firmware on your Flipper Zero? Well, fuck you, it's a standalone device now. Thanks to this awesome Flipper app developed by Cocomelon, you can actually install it directly to your Flipper and just interface with the Marauder firmware right from the Flipper. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Over to you, John. Hi, I'm John. The Flipper app installation is actually very easy. All you have to do is go to Coco Code's GitHub repo, where he actually hosts the app, you download the app file, and you just place it in the apps directory on the SD card that goes inside of your Flipper device. You just have to make sure that your Flipper device is running the most up-to-date firmware. And once you do that, you can turn on your Flipper, go to the Applications folder, it's under GPIO, you should see an application called Wi-Fi Marauder. This application will actually allow you to do everything you'd normally be able to do using the Marauder CLI directly from a PC or a mobile phone. Uh, the difference is you just use the uh, four-way directional pad and the center button uh, and the back button. If you have any other questions about this process and how it works, uh, you can kind of just make the internet your bitch and have it info dump all over your chest, stomach, and lower abdomen area um, and kind of figure things out as you go along. I can't speak to all Flipper firmwares, but this process should be consistent between the official firmware, Unleashed, Rogue Master, and, and anything else that uses a FAP file, hopefully. But let's go ahead and talk about the next update to the Flipper hardware uh, that the Marauder uses, and that is the use of an external SD module. Now, this information isn't necessarily new. In fact, there are a lot of folks who have already installed this modification, and I even sell enclosures that can accommodate the SD card uh, for the Wi-Fi development board if you choose to install this modification. But the bottom line is you would either use an SD breakout module like this from SparkFun or the one you see me fiddling around with here. The goal with this modification is to actually allow the Marauder firmware to take the Wi-Fi traffic it sniffed and actually save it to the SD card in a PCAP file, just like how the official Marauder works. That way you can take the SD card, put it into a laptop Raspberry Pi or a desktop computer for analysis later if you want to open it up in Wireshark, or Reaver, or anything else. The process for this is actually pretty simple. I have the connection listing here on GitHub, so you can follow along here if you want to install it yourself, but the idea is that you would just connect the breakout module directly to the Wi-Fi development board uh, by soldering some wires. Uh, you just connect the SD to the SPI bus on the ESP32 and connect some voltage and ground and you're good. do that you just have to find a 32 gigabyte max SD card uh, of a lower spec typically older SD cards work and you format that with FAT32. Once you have this connected however you want to make sure that you go into the settings of the Marauder firmware and make sure save PCAP is enabled. Real quick if you've made it this far in the video and you're enjoying the content definitely consider subscribing and maybe dropping a like. It helps me out it's free but God help you if you decide to change your mind. 
Now, while you weren't looking, I went ahead and added some more creatine. I also connected the IPEX connector to the ESP32 rover module that is on the Wi-Fi development board but I'm actually a big fan of this enclosure design. The enclosure is pretty robust compared to the previous iterations, and uh, I'm also a big fan of how the antenna is mounted to it. It's a simple SMA connector to a pigtail to IPEX, in which case you can just add any 2.4 gigahertz capable antenna. It also accommodates an SD card on the side here, and if your printer is capable, you can get some pretty cool graphics on the back. We don't, we don't believe in B-rolls here. Now, if you have the testicular or ovarian fortitude to tackle a project like attaching an IPEX connector to the ESP rover module, I absolutely encourage it. I don't know if words can accurately describe just how effective adding a better antenna to the ESP32 is, other than uh, it works. Just to give you an idea, I ran the same exact scan with an antenna in the same exact spot I did a previous scan without an antenna, and not only did the number of networks and devices captured double, but the signal strength doubled, meaning the, the RSSI number got lower. Or less negative? Oh god, it's middle school all over again. Now I just want to take a minute to remind you guys who are watching, um, all of this information is included on my GitHub, there are plenty of resources available online, including our Discord server. If you have any questions about how to do any of this stuff or you want to share your project or see other people's projects where they've followed along, please feel free to follow the invite link down below. We'd be happy to have you. Now back to our regularly, regular, regular, regular. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about before I bid you farewell and take the long sleep is my OnlyFans, but that'll have to wait until after I tell you about these Wi-Fi development board alternatives I've been working on. I know Wi-Fi development board is kind of a buzzword, so from now on we're just going to call it a ESP32 development board. Anyway, the official Wi-Fi development board made by the same folks who make the Flipper Zero serves a good purpose. You can run Marauder on it, you can use it as a debugging interface over Wi-Fi, and it's okay. Sure, the form factor leaves a little bit to be desired, and it's somewhat fragile, and it doesn't lend itself to being very pocketable. The other issue is that it's not often in stock. That can be for one reason or another, so I've been trying to find ways to remedy those issues. If you've been keeping up with me on Twitch or watching any of my shorts, you've probably seen the development board that TriSphere and I have been working on. It's called the Wi-Fi Dev Board Pro. The form factor compared to the official dev board is much smaller. It mounts to the flipper differently. It still uses a header pin. However, the pins are attached in such a way that allow the board to sit flat against the body of the flipper, whether you have the silicone case or not. The whole thing can be mounted in a 3D printed enclosure, and there's even a light pipe that will diffuse the light for the status LED. The board comes pre-installed with a micro SD card slot. It still has a JTAG interface, and the GPIO for the ESP32 is broken out so you can continue to mod it if you want. I do plan to sell these on Tindy, and when I do, they'll come ready out of the box with the Marauder firmware pre-installed. This version you see here uses the ESP32 that just has the internal PCB antenna, however, I do plan on offering an option that will utilize an external antenna, like an SMA connector or maybe a pigtail. A couple more designs I've thrown around is this one you see here. This adapter board here actually allows an ESP32 WeMOS D1 Mini to mount to it, so that way you can install the Marauder firmware on the D1 Mini, mount it to this adapter board, and then mount the adapter board to your Flipper Zero. This adapter board adds some UART activity LEDs, an RGB LED, and a micro SD slot. This configuration allows you to use the Marauder firmware the same way you would expect to if this were an official development board. Now, if you currently have an official development board and you want to install the SD card mod on it, but you don't really like the look of all the wires everywhere, you don't like the bulk of the SD adapters that I showed previously, uh, I do have a solution for folks like you. There's this small, PCB that I've been working on here that solders directly to the GPIO breakout of the Wi-Fi development board. There's no wires involved. You don't have to try to route anything. You don't have to try to figure out which wire goes where. You just place this PCB against the back of the development board and you solder each point. This modification simply adds the SD card and you'll notice here that there are a couple your activity LEDs just because I like blinky shit. Depending on how many folks are interested in this idea, I might sell this one as well on Tindy, uh, but we'll see. I think the mod is 
an effective way to add the SD capability to the Flipper Zero, and I think the installation is certainly easier than using one of the SD breakout boards and some wires. I also designed this SD mod to be compatible with the current enclosures I've been selling on Tindy, uh, so that way if you already have an enclosure that has the SD cutout for one reason or another, you won't have to change the enclosure. However, I have designed an enclosure that accommodates this SD card mod where there's just a tiny little cutout for the SD to slide in and out of the slot. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys found some of the information I presented to you useful in some way. And I really hope you guys uh, go ahead and try some of these projects. Even though I sell some of this stuff on Tindy, if you have the ability or the experience necessary to actually do this stuff yourself, I encourage that more than I would giving me money for stuff. I find all of this fun and interesting, and so it always makes me happy to see other people do the same thing. I will see you guys next time, and uh, if this video gets 10,000 likes, I will jump into a pool of lava. Bye.